oscillator grade. They're good sizes. <sighs> arrived at Crystal Vista, Arkansas. As you can see, it's been worked back in the day. And on the surface, we've only been here 15 minutes and we're finding all sorts of things. The strategy here is planning your trip after the rain. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Mode of access is hiking up this trail from the main parking area, coming up to the first peak, down the ridge line and you see a sign that says Crystal Vista. And some of them you can see are just like geometric dew drops. Look at that big one there and then that looks like it could, that could be the sandstone. You're right. We are in the Crystal Mountain Sandstone Formation. Megan over here absolutely killing the game. It became clear quite quickly that there is no shortage of crystals in the tailing piles at Crystal Vista. However, Megan and I wanted to know if our mineralogical knowledge that we've acquired from rock counting and prospecting in other states was applicable to finding a pocket in Arkansas at Crystal Vista. By the way, if you were one of those kids who chewed through the leash your parents had on you when you were a kid, as I did, to see what the limits of exploration really were, then you will wonder, how far does Crystal Vista go? The area that you are allowed to dig at Crystal Vista encompasses one to two square kilometers, and it is on the ridge line. The boundaries are clearly marked in all directions with signs that say no collecting beyond this point. However, do not be disheartened because there is pocket potential on the ridge line. Megan and I went east, and within only 20 minutes, we found a vein that was spitting out crystals, and here's how it went some faces emerging. She noticed that mud was getting super red, almost like my gloves. So she's following that along right now. We can see what the rock is doing. We're at the intersection of two veins where there's a quartz seam with clay running this way and another one running this way. And right at the intersection, more crystals forming. Yeah, I think there's inclusions we're considering they may be blue phantoms here as well. They're dark gray and kind of blue. Confirmed blue phantoms. Here you can see a concentric zone parallel to the faces of the crystal, which mark a change in chemistry. This is the blue phantom mineral, which later we will polish and create a thin section to identify. Ooh, yummy. Party bus. <laughs> Look at all of those. Get underneath it. I'm gonna pry this off. Megan just pulled out all of these crystals. And then beneath it, this one's wiggling and loose. It's all clay. <laughs> Megan just popped this one out. This is one on top of a rider. This seam just keeps on getting better. We're seeing this really coarse crystalline texture and we have an idea that this may be getting bigger going down. And also if it gets bigger going this way. Wow, big. And Megan just found a scepter, like first actual scepter. <laughs> it's so pretty. <laughs> Fissure continued to widen the further we went down, but the quality remained about the same. So we became curious, what exists outside the confines of Crystal Vista? After a full day of research into private property plats, land ownership status, and claim status, my chinchilla friend and I found a new place to roll around in the dirt. We didn't do any digging here, but this is what we found right on the surface, eight kilometers away, roughly south of Crystal Vista. We have all these fissures that formed in the sandstone and then later filled with quartz 
Here's a large example. More float here, pretty much all of it has space and little cavities forming, but the trick is finding where it's clear. Megan, 100% inspired by nature, started wandering. And look what she just found at the base of this tree. <laughs> That's the first one she noticed. And then a fully developed one right next to it. <laughs> Does it have a record keeper on the front? No, not a record keeper, but actually three record keepers. Certain zones are just super clear, and this is just one of them. We didn't do any digging at this location because below was a salamander den, though it did get pinned for the next trip. One thing we did notice while prospecting Arkansas backcountry is that within the shale bedrock, you get really milky quartz, while within the sandstone, you get higher transparency. We're gonna head to this tailing pile because it's coated in water clear quartz crystals. We arrived right after a torrential downpour where you couldn't see five feet in front of the car. The ground is completely frozen, but a definite tip, a rake is an ideal tool here. That clarity. <laughs> Dropping them all down the hill. I nose dived after them, because I dropped them. That one's oh. kind of cute. Oh, a golden healer, that one. <laughs> so beautiful. Oh. Good find. <laughs> oh. They just keep coming. Does it have inclusions? It does. A few more with inclusions. Megan's been busy over here. <laughs> See that rainbow in the middle of it? It's got a good point, too. They're good sizes. Oscillator grade. Iridescent. <laughs> Yay! Okay, I'm gonna take these off your hands. Oh, that's not bad at all. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Brian Major. Once again, look what Megan found. I found out. I found out how she's doing it. She has a magic wand in her pocket, and I saw her waving it when I'm not looking. And they're all coming right to the surface. <laughs> Look what <laughs> appeared. <laughs> uh, perfect condition. There's no damage. <laughs> Look at you. Right in the middle of the screen, the bottom half is a brown layer and the top half is a more iron clay rich layer. In the bottom half, Megan is not finding any, any crystals or any significant quantity. 
but he's following that around and we're gonna keep going into the mountain. They're all gonna look like this when we rent. I just rinsed it. It's my favorite. Megan is working so fast, her hands are smoking. Okay, we figured it out. If you go to Crystal Vista, make sure you dig in that first tailing pile you come to until you notice this change in soil chemistry. Brown at the lower end and red in the upper end. All of the most all-star crystals are coming from the red layer. Treat this like an actual dig site. I know it's a tailing pile, but that stuff is separated. All of the most fire crystals are in this red layer. Here's our final day. The wind chill was negative 10, but it was no match for us. Let's get the day started at sunset. Another sunset session. Glorious. Megan just pulled this gorgeous golden cluster on the golden hour. Geometric wonderland. <laughs> no way, front and back. Keep in mind that nine tenths of the time we spent at Crystal Vista was in one spot on one tailing pile. A short walk up the hill, right at the ridge line, and the first one you get to, letting you know, because of its accessibility, that there is absolutely no shortage of crystals at Crystal Vista. Because the fact is, they were scooping all of the most high grade crystals out of the mine, dumping it in these tailing piles, and then hand picking the best and leaving the rest, which are now grade A crystals if you ask me and my chinchilla friend. Megan. If you liked our video, maybe you could help us decide on the theme for the next Arkansas trip. Option number one, how to find a big pocket in place at Crystal Vista. Two, how to find blue phantoms at Crystal Vista. And three, how to find a pocket in the back country of Arkansas. Too much ground to cover both physically and mineralogically to do all three, so if you could help decide in a comment, I would be most grateful. This channel is devoted to breathing life into the mineral world and helping others uncover the magic and beauty that lies within it. Tabbies, cats and crystals for the win. Up at the very top, we're looking at the Ron Coleman mine collection. Golden healers, lots of iridescence we notice at this locality and some dendritic manganese inclusions within the quartz. Fun forms, some twinning, and good variety they are open also 24 hours a day yeah 24 hours a day no they're open every day of the year except for christmas this megan stumbled upon a tree that had tilled and pulled up crystals that were completely fresh and others that are completely caked in mud this looked like a hamburger just bun all bun and you had to move the dirt away in order to see that it has any crystals this one had mud all around the sides and all you see is a little corner or a little face. You just have to keep pulling material out and putting it in the bag and wash it off later to have a closer look. That one is a contact twin. In this area, there is so much healing going on. So just because you see a crystal and it's broken doesn't mean that it's not completely healed after the fact. Also, the mysterious blue phantom quartz. This pile back here, Crystal Vista. We hit one spot where we were following fissures and occasionally it would spit out blue phantom quartz. So they're pretty sparse and sporadic. Let's see what we can learn about this blue gray phantom material. I've cut some pieces down from these fragments and mounted them to a blank slide, which we're gonna make a thin section out of. The next step is to grind that down to 30 microns 
and then look at it under a petrographic microscope, which we can use some optical properties for diagnostics. All done. Let's catch these in some plain polarized rays. All right, we can see some planes of the inclusions. Don't mind the high order birefringence. The thin section is just a little too thick, but we do have undulatory extinction, so we know it's quartz. They're nearly opaque and do not have a shape to define what the mineral is. We're gonna go all the way up to the highest magnification. They're pretty amorphous. Even in cross-polarized light, there are no optical properties of these grains. I wouldn't even think bitumen, uh, no, no coal. It doesn't look like a hydrocarbon. And if I had to choose, I would say a clay mineral, something present in the neighboring bedrock, which we have sandstone composed of oxides and, and silica, and then shale nearby as well, which is a big mix of a lot of different minerals, but a lot of clays present and a lot of silica present in shale. Based on the technology that we have, I would say these inclusions are some component of shale, likely a clay mineral. YouTube rewards retention. So if you stuck around to the end of the video, you are now eligible to enter into a giveaway for these six Arkansas quartz crystals with record keepers. There are two requirements. Number one, mention in a comment the option that you wanna see for a how-to video in Arkansas for the next trip. These options were mentioned previously in the video. And number two, Name the twin law of this Swiss Alp Smoky Quartz crystal. Twin law is just another way to say the type of twinning. For anyone who chose an option and identified the correct twin law, I will put all the names into a bucket and choose the one lucky winner on the summer solstice of 2024. And I'll make a YouTube short of me doing this so you know there is no bias. Here are the Arkansas record keepers and let's add four of the Lemurians. Uh, one cluster and one iridescent golden healer. Good luck.